Welcome to episode 11 of Crash Testiva. I'm your host, Christy Eggers. I'm really excited about the theme for today's episode. We are celebrating the Winter Olympics. Mark Howard is back to share some helpful hints for Winter Olympic spectators. Annie has been test driving some adult beverages to keep you warm as you cheer for the USA. And I'll be wrapping things up with a tale about my experience on the slopes. Let's get started. Okay, on this week's episode of Taking It for a Test Drive, you know, we're celebrating the Winter Olympics. And while you're cheering on your favorite Winter Olympians, you need to have a warm beverage in hand. So I've invited Annie back to tell us about warm drinks for cold nights or hot drinks for cold nights. And days, too. And days. There you go. Okay, so tell us all about your... Are these all alcoholic beverages, or are Uh, there a few... (laughs) Well, there's there's one that you can make a couple ways, but they are pretty much... And let me tell you, if you grew up in Minnesota, you know about how to zing up your warm drinks in the winter, because it's cold here, baby. It's cold. It is. It is. (laughs) And if you perhaps had a child who played hockey and you had to sit through a lot of cold hockey games, you might, you might have found ways to jazz up your rink coffee too. Just really? saying. There might have been a, a trunk supply. Um, there might have been. There might have been. Now, that's something you certainly don't want to do if you're on school property, but if it's club <laughs> hockey, it might be a little different story. So I'm not saying I did this. I'm just saying it's Perhaps a it happens up here in Minnesota. I can't imagine might it happen. happens anywhere else. But might yes. happen. If the thermos says Mama Special Hot Chocolate, the kids don't get to drink it. Oh, so I never heard that. Yes. Mama's special hot chocolate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, tell us about Mama's special hot chocolate because I'm telling you, we're going to be watching this at night a lot because of the time yes. gap. And so I feel like I'm not going to be watching live. Uh, last year, or four years ago, I remember I was in Florida. You guys were up here in Minnesota. We were watching, and we were watching like in the morning. So we were able to yes. watch in the morning. But I feel like with the time zone, it's like while we're sleeping. So I feel like we're going to watch it delayed at night. Or we'll just stay up all night at my house because that's how we roll. But, you know. Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, you better have some caffeinated beverages on your list. I have that too. All right. So we'll just start with the hot chocolate. So, of course, hot chocolate, everyone knows what that is. But if you're an adult drinking hot chocolate, it's always good to add some peppermint schnapps. Just a shot or maybe what I would call a long shot in it. Log shot. It's all you need. If you want to be fancy, you can add whipped cream, but there's really no need. It's okay. just a it's just a sort of what I would call a classic Minnesota winter drink. So let me ask you this. Um, do you have a special hot cocoa? Because all hot cocos are not created equally. They are not. And I will say, if you're going to really go for the hot cocoa, you need to use milk and not water when you make it. None yes. of these mixes that just combine like water Swiss, and a You're powder. not a Swiss Miss drinker? I'm really not. I will say I have made where you melt real chocolate and then whisk in your milk, and that is the best way to go. Oh, my God. That sounds like a lot of work. It is a little more work. It is a, a lot little of more work. But okay. let's talk about something that's less work. Okay, let's. But still what I would call a classic Minnesota drink, and that is Bailey's and coffee. <laughs> So for those of you who are not familiar with Bailey's, it is just a delicious Irish liqueur, right? I think oh, yes. that's what it is. It can be just, <laughs> you can just enjoy that on the rocks, my friend. It is in delicious fact, on the rocks. In fact, when I lived in London, when I was studying abroad, the Irish guys we used to hang out with at the end of the night, even though there would be like a pint for you on the table of whatever you were drinking before last call, they'd go, how about a wee one, Christy? And they'd get me a little shot of Bailey's. So I, I'm, I've got fond memories of Bailey's. So yes, it is, tell me. It's just delicious. And it is not 
expensive. You know, you can buy a big bottle for $18, $20. You just add it to regular coffee. You don't have to do anything fancy to it. And again, a long shot. Not just a shot, you, a long shot of it. Now, when you say a long shot, when Dad taught me how to pour a drink, he taught me, I think it was the four-second rule, or was that Mary Mettler who taught me that? I don't remember. So uh, it's a long shot. So it's yeah. more than four seconds. Well, it's more than a shot is what it is. It's, okay, yes. okay, yeah. got it. Okay, okay. Um, I, you and, know, and I also have a recipe. Maybe I'll post uh, how to make homemade Baileys if people want to oh, make yeah. their own Baileys. Yeah. Okay, uh, there and, we go. Yes, and again, whipped cream, great. No whipped cream, it's okay. It's okay. And that is a, that's a really good one. Um, you know, if you're stuck with some bad ring coffee and you need to make it taste better, that is really the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is little tips from Anne for the hockey That's moms right. out there. And remember, I was never a coffee drinker until just the last few well, years. Well, you were never a t- coffee drinker until you could put Baileys in it is what I'm hearing. It, that is exactly <laughs> it. Then finally I realized, oh, coffee's okay. It tastes okay. <laughs> okay. What What's next? Okay, the next one is one that Kayla introduced me to over Kayla's the holiday our, Kayla's season. Kayla's our niece. And that is the Stroop Waffle in coffee. <gasps> oh, Yes. Did you have any of that over the I holidays? I did. I did. Tell, tell everybody about it. So the Stroop it. waffle is a Dutch liqueur, and it's based on the actual Stroop waffle, which is sort of a, what is the, uh, it's kind like of a, a roasted, nutty, a c- s'mory, caramel? cookie, waffly flavor. Yeah, yeah. There's caramely elements to it. And the cookie, you actually put, it's big, and you put it over the top of your coffee cup, and it softens up from the heat of the coffee, and then you eat it while you drink the coffee. But now they've made it into a liqueur, so you can just pour it straight into your coffee. And I found I liked it. I I sampled it a few different ways, and I found I liked it best if you put a shot, and again, that's a long shot of the Stroopwafel, and a shot of cream, and then your coffee. It was just a little richer and more delicious. Or maybe just that with some of that yummy whipped cream on top. That would be also be really good. Yeah, that would be Really, good. really good. Okay. I like All this. Right. That's a new liqueur, I think. It is. And it's, again, I looked it up. I don't, it's not expensive. And all, like, all the regular liquor stores you would go to would have that. It's not hard to find. Yes. Okay. 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 Do, do you have more? I have more. Oh, good. Let's keep going. So Irish coffee is not just for St. Patrick's Day. Okay. You can drink Irish coffee anytime you want. And for those of you who don't know what's in Irish coffee, it is four parts of coffee, two parts of whiskey, and I found anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon of brown sugar. So that depends on how sweet you like things. Stir it up and top it with whipped cream. Now listen, you are the woman who does not like dark liquor. Do you I drink don't. this? Do you drink Irish okay. coffee? I do. I do. Now... I think it's because there's a little sugar in it that I like it. Okay. The first time I had Irish coffee was when I was a senior in college. That was at the College of St. Catherine. You might remember that. Yes. And my neighbor, Angela O'Malley or Murphy or something. A good Irish Catholic girl. (laughs) Angela was her first name, but it was some, some, yeah. She had a St. Patrick's Day breakfast before class. And it was (laughs) Irish coffee. Let's get lit before we go to class. Okay. Irish coffee, green bagels, and cream cheese. And that was when I was like, hey, I kind of like this. This is a good drink. So I might have had a few. I might have. <laughs> this is probably a segment that's not for young ears. So, I don't think our demographic skews to the underage. I think okay. we're good. I think we're good. So I, I, I had a test that day. My first class that day was oh, an econ sakes. test. And I went to class, and I was pretty lit up. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. I was pretty lit up. And I took the test and my teacher happened to talk to me and he realized that perhaps I had been celebrating St. Patrick's Day early. And the next day when I went to class to get my test back, I not only got a perfect score, I got more than a perfect score because my answers were so good. I got extra points. Oh my God. And he thought it was nothing short of amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm laughing because I have a St. Kate's drinking story, but it wasn't a test. I took, I think at the time we called it rocks for jocks or something. And it was the planetarium class or, you know, it was looking at stars and we had the observatory or the, 
we had the big telescope on one of the roofs at St. Mm-hmm. Kate's. Yep, yep. And it was winter quarters, so it was butt cold up there. So I would always bring the old hot cocoa and schnapps up to class with me. If you're wondering when you need to drink it, there's a perfect that was example. That a good time to drink it. Yeah, exactly. But I don't, yeah, anyway. But you didn't take a test. I didn't, but that's kind of impressive. I don't know. We let's not let's just not encourage people to do this uh, no, at home. I haven't told my children that story, but well, that's you know. good. I don't think they listen to the podcast, so we're okay. Um, I think they might sometimes. But. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have more. I have more. I'm just if you want more about you drinking Irish coffee, but okay, let's go more. All right. So when I was a young businesswoman and traveling on my first business trip. To Seattle when okay. I worked for Union Bay. We would stay there for almost a month and they would put us up in this very nice extended stay apartment. But I would be, there would be like four girls in this place. And I don't remember what that place was called, but I remember what the bar was called on the first floor of it. And it was <laughs> called the library. And so every night, Donna Diadamo Dreyer and I would stop at the library on our way after dinner and we would get a steamed milk with Frangelico. Oh, yum. So if you are not familiar with Frangelico, that is a delicious almond or is it hazelnut? I think it's almond. It's yummy. It's an almond liqueur. You can drink that just straight too. But if you've ever bought for your children at Caribou or at Starbucks, a steamer <laughs> or a reindeer. This is the alcoholic version of that. So you could go through the drive through and get a steamer and then add just your Just say, own... don't put the shot in. Just give me the steamed milk and add your own shot. Yes, if you were going to hockey and you had to sit in a cold <laughs> rink, that is a perfect idea. And I can't believe I never thought of it. Oh, my oh. gosh. Okay, so that's called a just a Frangelico I, steamer? Steam milk with Frangelico. And you okay. just steam your milk. And if you... Don't have a steamer. You can just heat your milk. Okay, just in the microwave, add, nuke it, and okay. And then it's and better I, and, than and it's I'll steamed. Strongly, and I'm going to strongly recommend whole milk. Let's just be honest. And that is how they made it at this place because yeah. I probably gained 10 pounds on that trip because we were <laughs> drinking those every night. But um, they served them. So they'd steam the milk. They'd add, so four parts milk, two parts the alcohol. They'd put your foamy milk on the top, and then they would add chocolate shavings. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I know. Okay, that sounds so decadent. delicious. Okay. I think that's the end of my run. I think really? that's all I have. That was really good. I was super impressed. I, I, I'm surprised there wasn't a warm drink with rum chata. Okay, okay. So as we're talking, I'm like, oh, I should have done a rum chata drink. Oh, what do we add rum chata to? I think you would add rum chata to steamed milk. I think, I think that you could would. be... Yeah, for people who don't know what rum chata is, it's like... Oh, it's like cinnamon milk. It's like if you ate cinnamon life cereal and then you drank the milk at the end, that's what rum chata is. It's the milk at the end. It's Oh, it's so good. I have to tell you, I was at a holiday party and they served little decadent rum chata shots, jello shots. It was, they were phenomenal because it was not a jello y shot, it was more of a, a creamy, creamy shot, like pudding. It was more it like was, pudding, wasn't it? It was just, it was so f- funny and unexpected, you know, totally an adult shot, if you will. But yeah, I love that. Yeah, so, so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little taste testing on a rum chata oh, drink, you, you and I'll get just back take, to you. You're taking one it'll, for the team, it'll be an addendum to the, the okay, little we'll, we'll, program. we'll have a in the show notes, there will be a, a, a little asterisk with a message about a recipe for a rum chata hot drink yes okay well yes. here's what I, I i'm so excited that people are now going to be able to watch the winter olympics and stay warm with their hot drinks on the cold nights so thank you annie this was an amazing segment well it's as always my pleasure well i just think you know you are such a seasoned shopper and now i've discovered you're such a seasoned hot alcohol drinker well yes <laughs> Yes, there was a period in my life when I was a very good drinker. So there you have it. (laughs) Okay, well, thanks for being on the show. And um, go USA. You got that right. Okay, bye-bye. I know you have all been anxiously awaiting the return of our next guest. 
I think it's almost been two months since you were last on, and my friend, we've missed you. So, without further ado, welcome back to the show, Mark Howard. Oh. Have you learned how to how to plug in applause onto your garage band? Well, maybe we'll figure that out for you, but no, I haven't. Now, this is very fascinating because, again, he's back with another helpful hint because, you know, his hints are some of our favorites. And this one, I think, is going to be wildly applicable to so <laughs> many of our listeners because I can, I can imagine that many of them are traveling to South Korea for the Olympics. <laughs> My friends, Mark Howard is here to tell us some tips when you go to the Winter Olympics. Uh, and so... Uh, for for in case you're not going to Korea, South Korea, please forward these on to all your friends who will be there. Welcome back with another far from helpful hint, our guest Mark Howard. And thanks for bringing me back after my first uh, tip on the bounce dryer, dryer sheets. I know that that um, drew some lines, and there were some people for it, and then of course some people against those chemicals being all over their body. But I'd like to say I'm alive and still going strong with my bounce dryer sheets in my well, you know bed what? and in my we- shoes. We welcome people uh, wherever they are in their journey of life. And if your journey takes you through the land of bounce dryer sheets, come on over. Listen to Crash Test Diva. Well, okay, friend. Great. We got it. We, okay, first of all, I should say that I started this and I said, hey, I'm going to do an episode on the Olympics. Got anything to share? And immediately you said yes. Well, they're helpful hints um, and tips from my previous experiences with the Olympics. I can be on record that I'm not going to the South Korea Games. However, for those who are going, it will apply because this happened to me in the 2002 Winter Olympic Games when they were brought to my um, my mom and dad's area of the United States in Park City, Utah. So are you ready for my tips? There's three, yes. but they're short. Oh, I love it. I can't wait. I can't okay. Wait. So um, the first tip is if you're going to the luge... Um, the tip is don't buy those tickets. My mom and I went to the luge and <laughs> you hike for a good hour and a half up to the middle of the luge course and we had the cowbells and we're standing there waiting and the luge people go by so fast that you literally have not even, not even one second of enjoyable cheering time and then it's over and you wait for another hour. So tip number one, avoid the luge at the South Korean Games. <laughs> say pretty much any winter olympics you don't want to buy a ticket to the luge this is how this applies see you can carry these tips on for every four okay, years okay. tip number two <laughs> if you buy tickets to the ski jump buy binoculars we sat about 50 rows up in the coldest bleacher seats at the very end and when the ski jumpers go down the hill and they come off the jump you're facing where in front of them where they come off the jump it they are so small you can't see a thing. Again, most unpleasant. Most unpleasant. I encourage you to Not, get a ticket to this, but it's you can't see anything unless you have binoculars. So it's a tough spectator sport. Really tough. And I think that's the rule on the first two. I, I would say, I think, in general, are uh, individual sports difficult for spectators? Well, well, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true, because figure skating... Yeah, and and I was going to add, you are asking the wrong expert on sports, yeah. friend. So I, I, that is something I really can't offer any... You know, I am any... so proud of you for <laughs> acknowledging your strengths and recognizing your weaknesses. <laughs> the third one is, is, is in relation to... I'm just, I'm just carrying on. <laughs> um, the third one is if you go to hockey. Now, hockey is a very big sport, obviously, in okay. the Olympics. I can't believe you went to hockey. Well... This is the funny part of that before I get to the actual tip. I think wasn't it back in the day it was a Russia versus the United States was the big hockey like the big game, right? Um, that was 1980. Yes. Okay, All thank right, you. Cool. See for those who can't see Christy, she's holding her head right now because she's so can't believe I'm asking such a stupid question, but it's true. <laughs> well, you would think that um, we would, it was very exciting because I, I remember that hype and my mom got us tickets and I don't remember the countries that were playing, but let's just say it was something like Brazil playing uh, Uganda. Jamaica. I mean, it Jamaica? was just, it was, it was the, it, du- we were watching the USA. And it, and it was like, <laughs> The the whatever's before the semifinals, like it wasn't even a, a, a significant game is my point. And I think I already had the event planner blood in me because we had to drive to Salt Lake City for this event. It was down in the city outside the mountains. And I was very concerned about traffic. 
I will find a picture of this, uh, of this situation. But my tip is don't drive yourself. Take an Uber. There weren't Ubers back then. My mom and I were literally the first two people in the parking lot of the hockey games at the Olympics. We were so early <laughs> to the Olympic games of the hockey match. That we had to go to a bar, and it's at the time it was very Mormon, and you had to order food at a bar to have a drink, so we had to order chips and salsa, like this Ruby Tuesday, and we sat there for four hours because we were so early. <laughs> Wait, why did you go four hours early? <laughs> because I didn't want to miss the game, clearly because I'm a sports fan, but, but, but because I thought that there would be traffic for the Brazil-Uganda hockey match. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I really okay. don't know, but I ha- I know I have a photo of that of my mom and I. See- we laughed so hard because it was absurd, and I'm sure you've never heard that story before. Did you stay for the whole game? Oh God, I doubt it. I don't think we did. I, okay, I mean, well, we will our social, uh, our, I mean, our digital media diva <laughs> will post that photo in the show notes to our website gallery, so Perfect. we can see you and your lovely mama at the game. And I'm hoping you're wearing red, white, and blue in the photo. Well, it's funny you mentioned what I was wearing because I'm pretty sure in one of those photos, either the luge or the hockey, we were wearing those ridiculous roots berets that were made. Do you remember that? Those are not ridiculous. Those okay. are the best. The reason I call, I think they're ridiculous is because... Roots is a Canadian manufacturer, and it's the Olympic Games in the United States. I thought that was strange that that was their key. I, I hear what you're saying, but but I, of course it didn't stop me from wearing a beret. <laughs> <laughs> Berets are so American. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had one of those. Now that you mention it, I wonder what happened to it because it's not in my hat you, bin this year. I'm your hat bin. You could probably my... sell it um, for a good price well, to a collector. I dig that up. I wonder where I'll unearth that in this house of. <laughs> Wonders. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your word more than mine. So I hope those tips are helpful because I feel that if you're not going to South Korea, and who wouldn't want to go to South Korea this week, um, <laughs> that it could be applicable in future Winter Olympic Games. I, I think those were outstanding tips, and I'm sure our listeners have enjoyed having you back, my friend. So I can't wait. I'll send you a note about the next theme and see what kind of hints you have for the next theme of our show. That okay? sounds good. Great. <laughs> okay, honey, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Go USA. <laughs> USA. As I brainstormed my experiences with winter sports, memories of some far from successful trips down the slopes came to mind. And well, you've guessed it. I've got a story for you. While Minnesota may be home for many winter sports, we will never be a contender to host the Winter Olympics. We just don't have the mountains for ski events. We have some big hills, but we do not have any mountains. In elementary school, we had a field trip where we boarded the buses and headed out to quote unquote Mount Cato to learn how to ski. I don't have fond memories of this event. They gave us a short lesson And then we got on the ski lift. Now, getting on the ski lift, well, that was far from pretty. To say I was uncoordinated, well, it would be an understatement. Getting off, well, that was an ordeal. My first time up on that chairlift, I fell down at the top, and they had to stop the chairlift to get me out of the way. Going down the hill, well, that didn't go well either. I, I just wasn't meant for skiing. In my 20s, a bunch of my coworkers would go skiing at a place called Highland Hills. I told them all about my ill-fated elementary ski trip, and they encouraged me to try again. They told me they could teach me. My friend Tara Soka was extremely patient, and after a few nights, She got me feeling pretty confident, and I made it down the hill without falling, and I was starting to actually enjoy it. But I moved on from that job and thus hung up the skis. In my 30s, I dated a guy who loved skiing, so I decided I could try again. Now, this guy was not a gifted, patient teacher like my friend Tara. 
he took me to a place called Afton Alps in Minnesota. As I mentioned, he loved to ski, and he really, really loved to ski out west. And he always was stressing to me that skiing out west, well, it was so much better. And here, it was so much different, and it was easier. He would tell me that the black diamonds in Minnesota were like the green runs out west. Now, for those of you who are non-skiers, green is one step above a bunny hill. It's for beginners. The snow conditions in Minnesota are also not super ideal. Our snow is not fluffy and powdery. It it tends to get a bit icy and choppy. Those two lessons from Tara a decade earlier must have stuck with me as I impressed this guy with my first couple runs out at Afton Alps. So he thought I could go straight to the Black Diamonds. Again, He kept reminding me that out west, those were just beginner hills. For those of you of a certain age, when I say, the agony of defeat, it will conjure up an image from Saturday afternoon, the opener of ABC's Wide World of Sports. For those of you who don't recall this, well, in the show intro, They play this really regal music and they show all these victorious athletes. And then, as they say, and the agony of defeat, they show this clip of the skier totally biting it and spinning out of control down the hill. I'm creating this image in your head so you can imagine how my first trip down the quote-unquote black diamond went. Well, let's just say It went the same way for the next three trips down this hill. Thankfully, I was smart enough to wear a helmet. I'm not sure why I wasn't smart enough to just give up, but I was bound and determined to get down that hill standing up. On my fifth trip down, I made it. It wasn't pretty, but when I reached the bottom of the hill, I was still upright. Mission accomplished. My mom was not thrilled when I told her I was going to go out to try skiing again. She just didn't want me to get injured. As we left the slopes, we called my mom to report in that I made it off the slopes safely. This guy I was dating, he was anxious to make sure she knew that I was off the slopes unharmed. She was relieved, and let's be honest, I was relieved too. To celebrate, we went to this charming little city to grab some dinner. It was a Saturday night, and all the restaurants we walked into were packed. All I wanted to do was to toast my victory run with a lovely cocktail, and then fill my belly with some food. But after being told the wait time was at least an hour at the third restaurant we walked into, we decided to abort and head back to the city for dinner. As we turned to leave this third restaurant, I slipped and fell and twisted my ankle and ended up in the emergency room. Seriously, I can't make this up. I survived four agony of defeat falls on the quote-unquote black diamond, but trying to find a place to have dinner... Stone cold sober, I missed a step and sprained my ankle. The moral of the story? Little things can trip you up just as much as the big things in life. So when given the opportunity, take the leap. Don't be afraid of an agony of defeat fall. What do you do? That's it for episode 11. I hope you enjoyed the show. A big thanks this week to Annie for all the great Olympic beverage ideas. Raise your glasses high and toast the USA. Mark, it was great to have you back on the show. Perhaps we should consider your own segment. We could maybe call it Far From Helpful Hints from Heloise Howard. What do you think? Finally, a big thank you to Josie Akers. She is kicking booty on our social media game. If you aren't already following us, please join us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. 
You don't want to miss some of the behind the scenes photos and videos. If you know somebody who you think might need to escape their own reality, please share our podcast with them. And if you have a few minutes, we would love it if you could give us a review on iTunes. Remember, bruises are like life. The harder you get hit, the more colorful and interesting they get. Yeah.